We are live. Welcome Dude. back, guys. The LDK podcast. LDK. Do one of you guys want to describe what we just watched right before starting this? Mm. Uh, we just watched. Oh, Jesus. We just watched a uh, clip of Ben Shapiro explaining why he was ex- uh, he was moving his company to Nashville. Um, based on his wordings, it was because the bad governance of California, which I completely agree with. Uh, he was mentioning that our streets are unsafe. There's a bunch of homeless vagrants that have basically littered our streets, our suburban areas. That's pretty much the gist of it, right? Yeah, basically. I mean, yeah. it's just a shitty area. Fucking I mean, yeah. Southern California, I feel like, in general, is just an absolute... Uh, like, even fucking San Francisco, though, at this point, is just, like, fucking garbage land. Ah, fuck, I just right. burned myself. God damn it. That was that was the goddess California smiting you. But, yeah, I mean, even K-Town. I mean, I guess growing up in K-Town, right, it was... We're used to homeless people, but if you actually look at the level of homelessness and basically homeless villages that have kind of creeped up all over the city, all over (coughs) K-Town. On like Wilshire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, every time I leave the house, this is Wilshire right here. Yeah, even in Santa Monica, jeez. Oh my God, I I was assaulted here in Santa Monica. (laughs) (coughs) By a vagrant? (coughs) Yeah, um, the first one here in Santa Monica was a vagrant, but he lived out of his truck. And then the other few times were all in Venice and they were all like fully homeless, like cracked out. Oh, wow. Zombies. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, LA is falling apart. I think it's pretty safe to say we're all in the mindset that it's time to go. But I think the exciting upside of this is there's so many places in America we get to go. Mm -hmm. Where would you want to go? Um... I mean, since Utah, I've been thinking a lot about Utah. Um, right. <coughs> but I don't know. I haven't explored enough of the states to know better yet, I feel. I yeah. don't know my new home enough. We should definitely. I mean, that's why we're, that's why we're traveling, right? <coughs> to yeah. explore. Yeah. But I think, like, a lot of our followers should maybe give us hints and suggestions of places to go. Mm-hmm. Um I just want to get the fuck out this state straight up because you know I'm from you know we're Danny and I from here LA it's our, this is our hometown this is where we grew up basically and for the life of us or for, for the life of me <coughs> I can't it's 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 unbearable because the level of like there's no community, right? Mm-hmm. No one gives a shit about each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like literally cuz everyone is in survival mode, which I understand, especially now. But you know, it, the rhetoric of just dare I say, you know, Hollywood of all this beautiful talk of like love one another and media as well, fucking the media. Love one another while they're telling us, you know, to hate each other. Yeah. They're telling us <coughs> all about how Sorry, terrible we are. In my face. And how useless we are. No, I completely agree that there's no community here in Los Angeles. Like, that was the one thing. I couldn't put my finger on it for, like, years into moving here. I couldn't understand why everyone was so miserable. I couldn't understand why it was so hard to keep friendships going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously I internalized that and I thought it was me for a very long time. And then I met you guys and I met the community that I'm kind of surrounded by now. Mm -hmm. And all of our friends and... Yeah, I realized that it's literally the smartest people as well <laughs> like, who are leaving. It's all the really successful people who are like mm-hmm. very publicly saying yeah. that there is zero quality of life left here in California. Mm-hmm. But what was, I got to ask, just because I think, just for like for me, I guess, but what was K-Town like when you guys were growing up? Like compared to now, what was it like back then? Because I guess like Lanny, you were... I guess you were both alive for the 1992 riots as well. Yeah, I was only two. That's but true. Yeah, yeah, I was... I remember I was in third grade. So I was... Five. No, no, I started school... How old was I? If I was in third grade. I started school when I was four. So I was like seven. <coughs> yeah. Um, And I remember... Yeah, yeah, everything was on fire. I mean... <laughs> 
It's not that much different now. Jeez. Someone set fire to a palm tree on, I, I think it was either Sunset or Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, did you guys see that video of, uh, you just reminded me, um, this woman in, I believe, Oregon, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, um, she caught somebody on her property. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With matches. I just saw it today. And she fucking held him down with a fucking pistol. And she was like, where are you from? Like, where are you from? What's your name? Why do you have matches? He was like, oh, I'm smoking a cigarette. He was, she was like, where the fuck are your cigarettes? And he was like, oh, I don't have any cigarettes. Uh. And she was like, if it was my husband, you'd be fucking dead. I was like, God damn it, I wish it was your husband. Holy shit. Yeah. Fuck what that piece of fuck? shit. Well, it's like my good friend Carol. Shout out to Carol at LA Vagrants. <laughs> she's been reporting on this stuff. Oh, sorry. She's been reporting on this stuff for years. Mm. Like, it's really bad. The <coughs> number of fires started by vagrants in the last, I think it's three years, is like, it's more than 50% of them. And we've seen this insane increase in the number of wildfires. Mm. And I mean, you don't even have to be able to do basic math, which I can't, by the way. To kind of put that together, but you guys didn't really answer any of my stuff about like K Town and what it was like when you guys were young. I mean, for me, it was it wasn't too bad. Um, I know when we were younger, at least for me, we were able to. Well, me and my friends, we we played outside. You know, oh, I, yeah. I did get my bike jacked. <laughs> Not gonna say. What, what colors what what skin color but <laughs> i did get my bike jacked um oh. <coughs> i think i was like seven mm. yeah um but that's then, a harsh lesson to learn at the age of seven yeah. i feel like getting your bike stolen getting anything stolen at that age is like a very rushed introduction right. to what the right. real world is yeah like. especially your bike that's basically your car as yeah. an adult right you know um yeah. but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, I think, for me. <laughs> it, it 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 got worse over time for sure. Yeah. 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 That's when the stabbing started to happen. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, like literally. I guess we'll talk about that later, but Yeah. But no, K-Town was it was it wasn't as um I guess affluent, but mm. then again, you know, Koreans have always had that mafia mentality. You know, that's why K-Town exists. It, you know, it, it literally exists because of the Korean mafia. Yeah. And it, it, when you have that immigrant mafia mentality, you can get shit done. Mm-hmm. And it, I think K-Town has, you know, it has that allure. Well, allure, allure. That's a f- weird word. Allure. allure. Who's the professional voiceover? Holy <laughs> shit. That was, what the Allure. Um, Monaco and Allure. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I just lost my train of thought. What that that? We're talking about the mafia in K Town. You, oh, li- you yeah. were lining us up to get all shot after this goes out, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, so K Town wasn't, you know, it was mostly co- uh, Korean people. You didn't see a lot of um, white folk as you do now. Sorry. I mean, I think that's great. You know, it's, I love seeing that diversity, as they say, that fucking word. But it is cool to see a bunch of people love Korean food and, you know, love Korean culture. That's really awesome to see. That guy at the pub the other day was really annoying, though. I guess you guys, what do we, you guess you don't call it pubs. Kind of bars. Bars. W- which one? No, we went for dinner the other day. And he was like, mm, can I have, like... Oh, God. Yeah, that guy. Who? Oh. That's, oh. that's the annoying oh, side. That. That's when you the reminded the that you're in... Yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah. the, the yaki, no, not the yakitori place, the... Uh, the lamb place? The lamb skewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the worst oh, fucking Oh, beacons. okay. The one in, in Koreatown. Yeah. Near my place. Yeah. Got <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the annoying side. That's when you're reminded you're back in Los Angeles is you just hear like anyone, particularly a man with a mm. valley girl accent and it's just it. like, oh, okay, I'll just go <laughs> right. fuck myself. Because I can't, I mean, we can't handle women speaking that way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The whole valley... I'm gonna start talking like that when you start getting on my nerves. No. Every time you like pin- a snake? every time you pinch me from now on, I'm gonna start. No, don't, 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 don't ever talk like that. I no, can, don't ever. I can't. I can barely deal with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ! Truth comes out. Yeah. Danny, king of the racists. But <laughs> you know, going back to uh, growing up here. However, when I did get older, um, this happened. I showed you guys this. Oh, that's the um, oh, that was witch stabbing. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a stabbing, but it was a attempted robbery oh. towards me. Oh. I was, oh, yeah. I was, uh, what? I was nineteen. 
mm-hmm. in Fuck downtown on, on 11th and Wall Street, 6 p.m., broad daylight like this. Fuck. And I was in front of this, uh, it was in the garment district that I was in front of this building waiting for the person to, the owner to come and interview me, but he was somewhere else. And so within a couple minutes, this guy comes and asks me, hey, can I use your cell phone? It was a Hispanic guy. And I said, sure. I was, I was being nice. And then all of a sudden, he said, give me your fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> he, he pulled so out funny. a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Uh, he pulled out a knife. And um, I, I, I mean, everything happened so fast. But I, I push kicked him. And then. <laughs> Fuck it. You, did uh, you teep him? Yeah, I teeped him. Fuck yeah. yeah. And Jesus. then he ran towards me with a knife. <laughs> and I tripped over, so I was backing up, but I didn't realize I was at the curb, so I tripped over and I fell oh, on the street. And he got on top, <gasps> and he was doing this. Oh, my God. He, he just made the hammer motion, basically yeah. trying to stab yeah. his face. Yeah, uh, well, they can see now, remember? On YouTube. If you oh, watch right. it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and so I was, you know, covering myself, and that's, oh. that's how this happened. I don't, I don't know exactly how it happened, but, you know, it got lined up here. Oh, it got fuck. cut here, and then this part got cut right here Fuck. Yeah. um and then he didn't take my cell phone but he he tried to run after i pushed him off and he tried to run and i chased after him and he had a he he had a bike in the alley a bicycle oh. so he, he ran away and i came back I, I walked back and i was i was just kind of i was in shock a little bit right because i didn't know what yeah. the fuck just happened yeah and then Maybe a minute later, uh, my ex boss he pulls up and he sees me, and my uh, um, my blood was like pulsating, so it was squirting out Oof. every time, squirting. I was bleeding all over, and then you know he he got his fabric from upstairs, he wrapped it, cashmere, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> called nine one one, and then um, I had no money at the time, so when the uh, paramedics came, I asked them how much it, how much is it going to cost for me to go, and. They were like, oh, I think it's gonna cost like three thousand just for the ride, and fuck I was that like, fuck shit. That. So yeah. they said you could we could wrap up your hands, and you could oh go to the hospital God. yourself. So I um, they wrapped it up, and then I had a stick shift car at the time, so I, I drove oh. myself oh my to the hospital, God. and it was so painful. And luckily, when I got to the hospital parking lot, I showed the security guard, look, I just got attacked. He's like, oh, just go ahead and park right here. And he didn't charge me for parking. And I walked into the emergency room. You guys get charged for parking at the fucking hospital? Well, the one I went to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I ended up calling my friend. And he came over so he could drive my car back. And that was that. And I went to work the next day. Jesus. My new job. <laughs> See, that's when I meet any millennial who complains about anything. Right. Work related, particularly. Right. That's when I'm just like, and you're dead to me. Right. Holy God. shit, Danny. Wait, how old were you again? I was, I think I was like 19 or 20. Bloody hell. Yeah. That was, uh, I think that was definitely one of the moments where I realized, like, okay, LA is a shitty place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if anything, it's going to do it. Oh, I just figured out my mic. You guys Thank hear the, the difference? Lord. Sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, look, LA has its benefits. I get it. What? We where, where, what? Where are they? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, but lead. like, look, I back in the day, God, back in the fucking day, when it wasn't so political and wasn't when it wasn't so you know polarized. Mm. You know, when there was, you know, when you think of your childhood, there were there were moments of like a good times, right? Mm. Being able to play out in the streets and. You know, not get raped. <laughs> I mean, that shit we have to worry about now. Like, men yeah. and women. I, I'm kidding, mostly women. That's well, like, every... No, I mean, like, every day when I take Indy out, I catch myself getting nervous that I'm going to get serial murdered or raped not or no attacked. more, because you got Indy. That's very true. That's... His bark is fucking scary. It's so fucking scary. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... No, I mean, like, you guys saw how freaked out I was the other day when I took him out for a... And those two guys just like 
pull up in a van and they're just like, oh, I like your dog. And I was just like, what? Oh, yeah. But that's because how many stories have started that way and it actually ends up with murder? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So exactly. you have a good reason to have, like your gut instinct flares for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just feel like I don't want to live somewhere where every time I leave the house, that's what the, this place makes me feel like. Yeah. And weren't they in a pickup truck too? Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, Danny drives a pickup truck. <laughs> get, the get. guy who assaulted me drove a pickup truck. Yeah, but it's not a Raptor, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was a Ford, though. Uh, yeah, like yeah. a Ford, Ford Bronco. The fucking Ford guys. <laughs> Got issues. The old, like the 1980s, 90s Ford guys had issues. Oh, that's pretty much what this truck was. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Um, no, I think, like, all of the smartest people that... I know even the ones that I disagree with the most are leaving California mm. and I feel like that's the most bipartisan thing to ever happen in this fucking state ever <laughs> like it's like we all unanimously fucking hate this place mm-hmm. now yeah, you were saying that you some of your smartest friends are moving mm-hmm. that's a telltale sign and mm-hmm. granted you know the smarter you are you probably are a bit more successful but <sighs> I feel like America is the only country where that's true though certainly that I've ever been to yeah yeah i know a lot of really fucking stupid rich people back in britain and i know a a lot of really 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 fucking clever poor people because you have to figure it out hi poor friends (laughs) Mm -hmm. i mean mean, yeah until until we're ready to move until yeah i mean i'm sure we're gonna move together but oh yeah at least when i'm ready at least that for the time being what i'm doing is I'm I'm finding I'm trying to find the benefits here, you know, right? I'm trying to enjoy the moment. I'm trying to enjoy Which you what are. we have. Like like biking. Exactly. Mm. Biking, staying home. <laughs> <laughs> Quarantine has been right. a mild blessing. Um, oh, huge blessing. Yeah, um, you know, just I I talked to a friend, you know, I I told you guys uh recently um where she was mentioning like why don't you try to find what is around you first? Like, and then she was listening. Have you been here? Have you been here? Have you been here? Have you been here? And I was like, oh shit, no, I haven't. She's like, you should check it out. There's a lot of places that you can check out and a lot of places you can visit uh, that is in LA um, that you haven't realized that can be enjoyable, right? And so with that perspective, I, you know, I really focus on the bike riding, going through different routes, or routes whatever and stuff like that and it's been good so far it's been good so far but i still want to get the fuck out yep <laughs> yeah that's the ultimate goal just keep, just keep pedaling yeah, yeah keep you've pedaling. Made <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're gonna get a phone call one day uh guys <laughs> i'm not coming back yeah <laughs> like a forest gum style comes out with a massive beard I can see that, definitely. Right. If I can grow one. <laughs> I will say, though, so next week we have... Oh, should we take this stuff to Joshua Tree and do, like, a special episode in Joshua Tree, potentially? Yeah, we could, yeah. That would be... I think that would be super cute. I think it would be aesthetically very pleasing. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it would look like we make a lot more money than we do. <laughs> um, but I feel like... I hate Los Angeles, but m- my one saving grace about this place is the proximity to the high desert because i fuck i mean it's not like it was when i was there all the time but there's something fucking magical about that place it is exciting i'm excited for you to see it danny joshua yeah Yeah. i really hope it clears up because i checked the air quality and it's fucked up right now because of the fires i mean san bernardino county Yeah. yeah if we don't get to see stars I was about to make a really disgusting joke that I don't want to go into. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> well, fuck that then. Let's get the fuck out of here. I, I don't want to live somewhere that's on fire and full of zombies. Everyone's yeah. a zombie here. Everyone's a zombie here. Ugh. I'm a zombie here. I'm a, I'm a complete zombie here. Why? Huh? Because... <sighs> you wait... <laughs> Because it's you're just trudging through life. When I'm when I'm in LA, I just feel like I have to push through everything. But when I leave, I feel like I I can you know, the branches aren't hitting my face as I'm walking through life. But in LA, I just feel like you're walking, walking, and whack, you get hit in the face with this branch, and it has thorns on it, and then probably some kind of disease. Oh yeah, probably Corona. <laughs> 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 um. 
But yeah, you know, look, it, as much as I'm shitting on LA, which I, I have been for a very long time, and it's my habit when I travel, that's all I do is sh- just shit on LA, and I have to catch <laughs> myself and realize that, you know, there are people that love LA, and I don't want to shit on your home, but I'm from here too. Like, this is my home, and it's changed so much to where it is unlivable in my point of view, in my perspective. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, fuck the people. Sorry, guys. Like, like, for those of you who've come to LA and wanted to pursue this dream, like, do it your own fucking way. Don't be a jackass about it. I came out of nowhere. <laughs> no, speak on it. No, but it, it's true. It's a, you know, it's, I think it, it goes to say with the entire city, whatever region that is successful, finance, fashion, business, whatever it is, entertainment, the people at the top unfortunate unfortunately are a certain way and we are all trying to become successful like them and so i think people try to emulate that you know i can i can speak on hollywood you know i see that you see these people becoming the people that you don't like because mm-hmm. they're successful and that's a, you know maybe that's what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. it's just unfortunate but it's not it's not everyone you know it's not everyone there's some gems out there and and those are the ones we fight for but if I have to be honest, it's just, you know, everyone has drunk the Kool-Aid. You know, whatever is in fashion, everyone just eats it up and spews that garbage. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, and I, I, f- I feel like that's everywhere, though. You know, it's, gosh, the banking system, Hollywood... You know, fashion, I guess, are all intertwined in, into the same conglomerate. Yeah, I will say, though, most of the people I know who are really successful in the private sector are less prone to social trends. Mm. So, like, what we see happening here, like, I swear to fucking God, everything you just said just made me realize having a fucking mental health illness is fucking fashionable in this <sighs> day and age. So true. And, like, that's perpetuated through media and culture, right? Like, we champion these TV shows that, like, tackle mental illness. So people start acting like the fucking protagonist because they think that they're, like, the fucking most important person in the room. Yeah. And that's why we have no fucking community. But you know what? There's a lot more that plays into it. But social media and all that kind of shit. But, yeah. What's sad, too, though, is, like, on your point, Kay, is... I feel sorry for those kids who actually don't have the attention that they deserve from their parents or loved ones or friends. And Mm -hmm. so they need to find it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you know, watch certain shows or whatever, whatever medium you watch, everything that we watch in terms of entertainment, it's just pointed to negativity. And it's been that way for a long time. But especially now, it's, man, we are so polarized because of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're just spewing all this hate because, look, I'm guilty of this too. But we spew all this hate because we think we're so right because we have the answers. But at the end of the day, it's like, what if we're wrong? And the people at the top that are spewing this information to us, they're fucking doing it on purpose. What if is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, question it. And if you can't, then you're part of the problem. I'm sorry to say, like, you've got to question some of the answers you've come in your own life. Because... It's ever changing. There's nothing forever. Nothing. But we feel like it's safe. Like, you know, it's this way. So it's going to be this way forever. Like, maybe. But that hasn't worked for us. Like, clearly, look at what's going on. It hasn't worked. Like, this race problem and people arguing about whether there's a race problem. It's like, I don't even know anymore. Jesus. It's an economic problem. That's an absolute that's for sure. It's us against them. That's the real war. It's like the corporations, the people that are, are, are at the top who give us these jobs, like they're holding us down on purpose. And the politicians are all in cahoots. And if you can't see that, if you can't even admit to the idea of that, then fuck off. Like fuck you and fuck off. Well said. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean... 
<laughs> it's like I hear it in my like the 92 rush. Can't we all just get along? You know what I mean? It's just fucking that. It's just that. I know it's easier said than done. I understand. I understand. But motherfuckers, like, we all wake up. We all take a piss. We all brush our teeth. Sorry, the mic is fucking up. Like, we all do these things as a fucking human race. And I don't want to sound like this after school special, but fuck it. That's that's what it is. That's literally what it is. And we can't even fucking do that. They need us to infight so we don't fight them. Yeah, and right? they and they and they're fucking doing well. Like they are masters at it and we're eating it up. Like we're eating it up. And like I'm not saying I have the answers. That's the last thing I'm I'm saying. Like Kay said it best, right? The people who have who have the answers are the smarter people. But it's unfortunate that the smarter people are I think the ones that are fucking us over. Well, like that's like the kind of dichotomy that I see. It's like there's two types of smart people. There's the smart people who want the best for the world and they know how to achieve it. But then there's the people who are slightly smarter than them, I guess, mm-hmm. who realize that it's basically fucking impossible unless we all come together for a common purpose. And the odds of that happening are they literally have to be 8 billion and 8 billion. And I don't know how to fucking stats that. You have to speak to someone else. Yeah. And so it's kind of this fucking bullshit cycle where it's like that's why i think bill and melinda gates only tackled i this is gonna sound so awful but like for what they're worth they could literally solve every single every single (laughs) fucking problem but it takes a shitload of time right and coordination and so i'm like that's why they've only cured polio in africa (laughs) and like as i was saying it i was like okay but they did fucking do that but at the same time for the amount of money and wealth that they have they could theoretically solve all human problems and all of the real problems facing us. <laughs> but they can't because of the system we live under. Because if all of our problems are solved, then we have nothing to do. And if we have nothing to do, then we're going to end up back in the same fucking place. Yeah. I'd be <laughs> but there is a version that works. I'm pretty sure there are some small countries in Europe that have it fucking nailed. I would like to know, I mean, I honestly, like, I think of that idea of where is there a place on earth where there is <laughs> happiness, there is community, there is like, oh, I wake up, I yawn, and like birds are chirping, and does that really exist anywhere? Because if it does, please tell me where that is. Oh, parts of Italy, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, definitely. Okay, um, wow. But they still have the fascism problem. <laughs> um, and there's a little bit there's a little bit of corruption in Italy. I don't know if you guys know about it. No, there's loads of places in the world. But these are the places where consumerism, I feel like, hasn't really... In my, in my experience... And, yeah, fuck it. I've got, like, a lot of experience traveling back when, you know the world was slightly less fucked because there was slightly less social media but um yeah the happiest people i've ever met are the people who want for the least and who have the closest relationship with the natural world Mm -hmm. like i think of like all my aunts and uncles who i'm not blood related to but who are my aunts and uncles who live all over like rural france and parts of italy and they're so much fucking happier than everyone Like everyone back in the UK out here. Yeah. And it's because they get up in the morning when they want to get up. They go and get some bread. They do a little bit of work because they've already bought their house for like 50 grand. And it's fucking gorgeous. And it's on like two acres. (laughs) And it's all arable land. So they grow most of the veg that they need. And if they want a chicken, they got a fucking chicken. (laughs) And yeah, they're all happiest because they don't have to worry about shit like keeping up with joneses they don't have to worry about like oh is my amazon package going to arrive yeah like that stuff doesn't trifle them because they have all of the food all the supplies all the love around them that they need Imagine. that's something i think that's missing from los angeles there's love. no there is no love in this place <laughs> no, like but, at all but you know what's funny though Pe- it's spewed everywhere you see it everywhere love love right Speech love i love love one another guys but if we actually did, I don't, I don't think we'd have, I don't think we'd want to leave, guys. If that was the actual case, right? I'm not saying we're the 
you know spectrum of judgment here, but I would like to think that we're three people that are a bit thoughtful sometimes and a bit educated to think that like if there is enough love here that we would stay and there isn't there isn't everyone is yelling at each other and trust me i am the most guilty of this okay but at the same time like i i want to i want to be away from it and i don't want to be a part of it that's for damn sure not anymore i don't want to be a hypocrite anymore mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i feel like living in the city you just have no choice but to become one because it's one it's just the rhetoric right everyone's spewing what the fucking media is it's just pumping our veins with and to actually believe you know what i'm saying to actually believe everything that they're saying and to and to say that that is what's going on and then to use that to try to change whatever it is that you think should change yo that is bonkers that's fucking bonkers because that's not america mm -hmm. like america america is you know that you know freedom Amer america that simplicity you know as much as we make fun of it but that's what we want to go back to is that simple life and i get it that like there are problems in this country absolutely but what if the problem was in the fucking mirror i'm talking to myself like i god, i hear myself talking i'm like shut the fuck up lenny you know what i mean kumbaya dude <laughs> but maybe it's just that it's just simple as that it's just look in the fucking mirror and realize like we don't you don't have the fucking answer mm -hmm. and if you think you do maybe you do and then maybe tomorrow you don't and then so question that just a just a little bit a little bit you know what I think there's just ah man like especially in LA there's just so many negative people yeah negative people like um even in social media, mm -hmm. like when you some sometimes you go to like a popular page and you see the comments, mm -hmm. always a hate comment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think that's the that's the norm now, having haters, right? But you know what you know what it is with these fucking haters? It's like a lot of people, especially in this, I guess in this day and age, they don't have anything better to fucking do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? They just so they just talk shit. Mm -hmm. They fucking talk shit all fucking day on social media, especially behind a computer or the mm -hmm. phone. Yep. And they they don't stop. And you know what? You know what's funny? A lot of them have private pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Bunch of fucking pussies that talk shit, and it's everywhere now. Like it's some of them. You know, like the fucking Karens, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Kevins and Karens, or whatever the fuck it's called, the Karens. <laughs> like it's. There's just so much negativity, especially in LA, and it affects everybody. Yeah. It affects people like you. It affects people like you and me. Like, that's why we don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? That's why, for me, if I ever retire or if I ever want to move out, I want to get a property where I have no neighbors mm -hmm. right. at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, not that I have bad neighbors now, but. I want to fucking be by myself because everyone I talk to, every other person has so something negative to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the idea of the Kevin and Karens is not just for like the white folk. Like everyone's becoming a Kevin and Karen. That's true. That's true. Sorry. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone has these like way to live. Like you're not supposed to do this. I don't have to do. Yeah. It <laughs> but we live in a community where. Uh, yeah, that's just it. That's the end all be all. Right. It's a community. So we've got to live together somehow some the fuck how and if it means like staying in your fucking house just stay in your fucking house and be with the people that you like love and and kind of can share ideas with right and that's that's what we're doing now mm -hmm. yeah. that's what we're doing now because yeah. we have to yeah uh, this is a uh, you know like for the people that are listening like this is one option for us to uh maintain our sanity I mean, yeah, yeah I yeah. feel like it's a form of therapy. And honestly, Danny, to your point about moving out and not having any neighbors, I mean, I think that pretty much sums up what LA does to your psyche. It literally makes you hate people. Mm -hmm. I hate people. Every time my fucking phone rings, which is like 20 million times a day at this point, 
even when it's like my own family, people I love, sometimes when it's you guys, I'm just like, oh, I fucking hate you for calling me right now. <laughs> and I, I was never this way. I was never this angry. I was never this miserable. Yeah. It's this fucking town. It's the, it's the lack of community. When I think about my friends <laughs> back in university, for example, like our social networks were built on absolutely fuck all. It was just that we lived in the same proximity. We liked using drugs in the same way. <laughs> and we liked to party in the same way and just hang out. And we were interested in, I don't know, fucking like earth sciences. Jesus. Like just a bunch of fucking nerds. And I think about what tied us together. And we didn't have to fucking talk about it all the time. We just were together. We loved each other. Like we didn't have to worry like, oh, if we go out tonight, if someone gets in a fight, blah, blah, blah. Or yeah, it was just like we just didn't have to worry about any of that bullshit. Yeah. And I thought it was just entering adulthood, but then I look at my friends back in the UK, and they're miserable because Brexit, and they hate the UK now, and they all wish they were here. But I think, God, at least you know, there's fucking all of you are in it together. At least there's still that sense of camaraderie. Like, yeah, I don't want neighbors because I'm scared that I won't like them, and I'll know that they're nearby. Like, how fucked up is that? That's what LA does to people. Oh, you <laughs> know what? I did have a fucking shitty neighbor. When I first moved into that building I live in, <clears throat> I was on the bottom floor, remember? Yeah. And then, yeah. Do you remember the the person upstairs? Uh, they were constantly, oh, like, I mean, I understand. I don't think they were intentionally stomping on the floor, uh, but, like, especially at night. All right, so this guy had there was this guy that was living there, and he, I guess he had a, a a night shift, so he would come in late, but he would, sometimes he would be mad, so he'd be yelling, you know, at somebody or whatever, and he, fucking go ape shit, and he stomps all over, and I would wake up, so I asked management, can you please tell this guy to just just quiet down just a little bit, right? I'm not telling him to move out, whatever, and then he texts me. He got my number from management. Oh my Management's a fucking idiot, too. Fuck he texted me. He said, who the fuck are you to tell me to calm down or quiet down? And I, I just said politely, uh, let's meet up face to face and talk. <laughs> and you know what he said? I'm sorry. I'm too busy. You little bitch. Pussy. And I said, well, I'm here if you ever want to talk. <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> He's probably the dude that leaves the fucking weights everywhere. Yeah, did he move? <laughs> I have no idea. Jesus. I moved to the top floor. My, uh, <laughs> I had a, a similar, I guess, ish incident. I feel like, what? Is, can you guys hear that dog going fucking berserk? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not our dog, is it? No, and he's being good. Shut up. No, that's it. <coughs> should we cut this part out or should we just let the no, fucking okay. dog um, bark? I, I think the mic won't pick it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, fine. that's fine then. Yeah. Um, hopefully yeah i was gonna say someone's like actually murdering a dog out there but um no i'm only joking um <laughs> uh i had a neighbor threaten to kill me because i sang the jurassic park theme tune i think it was too loud that was in hollywood that was fun in the eight months i lived in that <laughs> fucking dump Oh, God. oh my Why god i had oh. an old i have an ex-colleague who's like proud of herself for buying a condo in west hollywood and the minute those words came out of her mouth i instantly stopped being her friend i was like this person is i will never not be friends with someone for them not being smart but i will definitely not be friends with someone if they're that fucking stupid oh that's a great way of putting it right that's a t-shirt thanks man yeah babes that's, that's Cause I mean I'm I I've always said this, like yeah mean people suck, <laughs> I'm guilty of it, but you know who what you know what sucks more stupid people. But you know, you're not mean, man. You're not mean. <laughs> you're just kind of honest. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You're just honest. Yeah. There's a lot of people, I think myself too, um, where I'm good at biting my tongue. You're just not good at biting your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't have a filter. Yeah. But there's no problem with that. You know, I know a very few people like that, and those are the people that I respect the most, like my mentor, Mr. Kim. Mm -hmm. Like, no filter. Does not care if the guy is more wealthier than him. I told you the story. Right. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a multi... Well, they're both 
billionaires, but <laughs> one is more, yeah. right? He doesn't he doesn't give a shit, you know? And look what happened. They ended up kissing his ass. <laughs> fucking love that. So fucking gangsta. You know? I fucking love that. <clears throat> and I think it's better to live that way if if that's your personality. For me, uh, that's just not me. You know, I don't always need to fucking yell and shit like that. But <laughs> um, this, is, this is why you balance me out, right? right? Um, but if that's you, I, I, I would say don't hide it. Yeah. Don't hold it back and say what you want to say because th- that in the end is going to keep you happy. And, you know, we talked about this over the phone too. Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep you sane yeah. versus you holding it in because that's just not your personality. You know? Yeah. So if anyone has yeah. a problem with you, <laughs> fuck them. Right. What the fuck are they going to do? Yeah, they can eat a pack of dicks. They can't even whoop your ass anyway. <laughs> 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 Man, you know, I mean, thanks for saying that because I guess we all go through that phase of, you know, questioning a lot of the things we've done in our personality. Right. Our character. Yeah, there's a lot of things I'm not proud of. And I guess there's some residue from from that. Um, but yeah, it's it's awesome to hear someone that you know. It's awesome to hear a brother say that because that means it's true, right? <laughs> right. I think. Um, yeah. I think there's a, a a fine line though. Like as long as you don't intentionally say something to hurt them. Right. Right. But if you're if you're speaking facts, if you're speaking, if you want to, yeah. If you if you're just speaking facts, then it's okay. But if you're, you know, if you're intentionally hurting them, it's a different story. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. The, the thoughts yeah. are there at times. Absolutely. Well, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think you're pretty measured with that. Like, we had a friend come to dinner who said some, well, I didn't say stuff, but like, you know, there were a couple of looks mm. as things that were said. And I feel like you did a really good job of yelling about the situation and not at her. Mm. Um, I thought that was really good. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I it's mean, very measured. Don't get me wrong. There was a different, there was different, definite moments of yelling at her. Oh no, you were yelling, but you weren't yelling at her like to be mean to for, her, no, like for Danny sure, said. For sure, you were yelling sure. about the situation, and that's healthy. Right. Yeah. If, if need be. If need be. Yeah, if yeah, no, be. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, like oh, the time we messed off with that pharmacist. Oh, but oh, she yeah. was a. That was so uncalled for. I mean, it was in the morning, you know, Kay had strep throat. You know, I was grumpy because it was in the morning. Um, But, you know, when your girlfriend or your boyfriend is hurting and they need some medicine and you ask the pharmacist very politely, do you have certain something? Propolis, propolis, whatever the fuck that name is. I think her response was like, what? And I was like, oh, fuck, God damn it. Here we go. Yeah, she was like, well, that's not going to help. No, she, and she was like, yeah, and she said something like that. And she was like, yeah, we wouldn't have that here. And you said something. And what did she say when you mouthed off? I, like, tried to reason with her. I was yeah. like, okay, but can you, like, recommend something then? But I think I said it like, oh, well, can you recommend something then? <laughs> um, sorry. When I shout, I've got to go backwards. Yeah, no, but. Egg. And then we just both went. It was just so uncalled for. Yeah. And, you know, I looked at her and instead of cursing at her, because, you know, I just always think about jail time. <laughs> I walk away and just start cursing. Like, is this what the fuck it comes to? You ask a fucking pharmacist for fucking help when your fucking girlfriend is sick. Are you fucking kidding me? Right. And I'm yelling this, you know, as like a crazy person I'm going down the aisle. Right. And then lucky enough, the manager comes up to us and he goes, is everything all right, sir? And I'm like. Fuck no, man. Like, you see that thing right there? And this is when I knew, like, no one liked her. None of the other employees or pharmacists stood up for her. Oh. No one said anything. We got a discount. <laughs> we got a discount. We got a discount. <laughs> Everyone was super helpful and funny with us. And, like... And that's what I was saying earlier. Like, there are people like that where they don't... They don't have... They're not fucking happy. So yeah. what they want to do is they want to make other people around them mm-hmm. on their level, right? Yeah. They want to make them unhappy too. Yeah. And so they fucking come out with that condescending attitude and and tone and like they bring you down. Yeah. Fuck them. That's like 90% of my clients right now. I just... You know who you are. You know what's crazy though? If there was like a, a second of thought more, maybe it's more than a second, but like, like you, ha- you know how you 
teach me, you know, what is your anger going to do? Like, if there's no outcome, then calm down. I mean, that really helps me. But it's the idea of like, oh, I lost just lost my train of thought. Yelling. Yeah, but what were you saying before? Oh, I mean, fuck. it's just the people that that are unhappy and yeah, people oh, who oh, bring oh, it oh, to oh, oh, yeah. To yeah. the same token of like, you know, my anger. If there's no point in, if it's not going to get you anywhere, then what's the point? It's it's the same thing. What's the point of being nasty to somebody, even if it m- makes you feel good? The outcome is it's bad for both parties. Right. It just takes that one thought. Right. But again, I am preaching to the choir. Like this is my this is my right. temper that I'm talking about. Right. right. I get that it's not easy. It's easier said than done. But man, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I am absolutely guilty of it. But again, I would like to think that as adults, we live and learn, mm-hmm. right? Let's learn from our <laughs> mistakes and let's not be nasty anymore. Right. If, yeah. I think it's situational though. I mean, remember like, remember the story I told you about uh, Mr. Kim and then the company that we work with, I can't say, mm-hmm. um, but there was an yes, employee yes. there, <coughs> yeah, oh, the assistant. Yeah. <coughs> I and love funny, that story. Funny that her name is Karen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and basically when I called her, to speak to the CEO, uh, you know, she had that condescending tone too. And she was yeah. like, you know, what do you want? You know, he's not here. He's busy. And, and then I, and she hangs up. I call back and she's like, what do you want? Well, you know, like I, yeah. I told you guys a story. And so I told Mr. Kim and Mr. Kim calls and, Mr. Kim, and then she starts yelling at him. Oh, God. And a then he, what he did, what he Jesus. did was he yelled back. <laughs> he yelled back. He's like, "Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> do you like it if I yell at you?" <laughs> and then she was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." And then, you know, like, <laughs> I think it's situational. You know, sure, I think sometimes, sure. yeah, sometimes it needs to be expressed. Yeah, there are some people that deserve it. I think because I think maybe they're in a position where they feel like, okay, no one's gonna talk shit to me. I have this power or whatever. I'm I'm in a fucking higher place than them. I'm a pharmacist or whatever bullshit. <laughs> you know, I mean, I make more money than the people that come here. Whatever kind of right, bullshit that they right. might think, mm-hmm. right? And when you see that kind of attitude, uh, you know, instant thought is, okay, you're not happy. <laughs> you got some yeah. fucking issues. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to let you fucking bring me down. <laughs> and I think when that happens, it's okay when you yell at him mm. and be like, Okay, you want me to yell at you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like what I yell at you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or or have the same tone. Yeah, you know, have the same tone. I mean, of course, it's not it's not the best thing to do, but right. sometimes people need a taste of their own medicine, like that. Sure, sure, right? for sure. Stupid ass bitch. <laughs> we we gave a little bit more than her medicine. <laughs> That's for damn yeah, sure. It was. Okay, so one time Lanny was leaving and he was like, don't get angry about something. And I was like, I don't have to get angry anymore. I've got you. (laughs) (laughs) Which is true, though. You know, it's because that's just it's not that I'm (laughs) I'm going out of my way. It's just to (laughs) you. I meant in the kind of context of like, yeah, I used to go fucking ape shit. Oh, for sure. Like I once smashed. So like. There was, I've told you the story about the old drunk guy who was trying to put his hands up girls' skirts. Yikes. Yeah, he called me a cunt when I was working on the door of Monkey Bar. Uh-huh. Oh, I miss that place so much. <laughs> um, I didn't even realize I was over the desk until I had smacked the drink out of his hand. Yeah, that's necessary. Like, that's just self-defense. No, know? he was just like, eh, fucking cunt. And I was like, all right then. And I just saw red and I was just, I'm going to fucking deck this was guy Was that tonight. here or in No, that UK? was back in Wales. Okay. There's lots of mindless violence in my hometown. Yeah, so he's trying to grope you. you no, know. he was just, ma- he groped other people in a different bar. Oh, so you're just like a superhero. That's cool. No, um, <laughs> I was just probably very drunk and I'd probably, it was just on one. Um, mm. But I worked on the door. But I think, you know, to Danny's point and to your point, rage and violence has its place. Mm-hmm. But it would be great if we could evolve as we age to a point where we grow out of that. But I think when you're young, that kind of fire, that's what gets you going in the morning, like that anger. And, you know, I find it so weird when people only stay in their hometown and just like do a kind of chill thing with their life. Like I'm like, go out and explore the world. And I find more and more that it's 
well like you can read it in the fucking news it's mostly like young men who stay in their hometowns who work the same job that they've had from when they were teenagers who end up becoming trolls online also the same sort of people who go and shoot up like schools and churches and shit you know oh go ahead ahead. no 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 no. you know what is justifiable though and i sent you guys this post Mm. is this remember Kung Lee from the UFC, or you know, he's a veteran now, uh, but he posted, and this is on pedophilia. Uh, the first yeah. motherfucker to look mm-hmm. me in the eyes and tell me that pedophilia is a sexual orientation better be able to fight because I will rock your shit. Leave the kids alone. 100%. 100 fucking million percent. That so people like like pedophiles, yeah, I'm all for just yeah. like locking them up in a room and just cut it them all down. Cut it off. Like if you're guilty of pedophilia, I'm sorry. If I was El Presidente, I'll, I'll chapo you. Like, it's... El Chapo, Jesus Christ. The number of young women, the number of friends of mine who can point to a moment in their childhood that was so disruptive to their psychology growing up that it led to so many issues in their adulthood. Like, just this one moment. Yeah. And, yeah, they want to fucking try and, like, legalize this shit. I don't even fucking know. Ugh. <sighs> the... F- I mean, we talked it we talked about this on the radio show. It's just the fact that we're even talking about this. Like, what the fuck? The like, fact, yeah, pedophilia, school shootings. Y- like it's all f- I can't fucking yeah. believe this shit's still happening. You oh my god. Like an MMA fighter, right? A legend has to come out and say that shit. Protect the kids because we're boinking them. What the not we're the fuck right. It's so fucked up. And like As we society, just yeah. we're just super chill about the fact that like Bill Clinton was on the plane with Epstein. We're just like so oh fucking cash about it, that. And Newsom, we were talking about this as well. Like Newsom passed the new law making it the the, the oh, so cent- it's fourteen and twenty four year olds apparently, but I haven't read into it. Is that what it is? But that's still fucked up. Like for what, like the level you, of sex education that I've seen in people in this country, right. like you're not educated enough to have safe, like even emotionally safe sex right. at any age. Mm-hmm. I don't think, like yeah. <laughs> until you've been through it enough. There was a there was a guy in 2016, <clears throat> man charged for attacking sex offenders, and he was greeted as a hero. Mm. So, just to simplify the story, he he went on the. Um, the site where you can see registered sex offenders near you and he went around killing them with the hammer jesus fuck oh my that's dexter god. shit yeah. oh my god and yeah. he was he's in, i think he's in prison now but <laughs> to be honest i think that's fucking awesome fuck yeah i mean <coughs> i free, am free a pr- i'm a proponent <laughs> of due process i yeah. am I'll like put my hand up and say that, but I also admit that we live in the wild west. So what the fuck do you expect is gonna happen? I mean, pedo- <gasps> pe- pedophiles. He killed them with a hammer. Yeah, though. but the fact is, like, pedof- pedophiles are getting away with this shit. Their sentences are not nearly as severe enough. That's so true. It's so fucked up. And right. so what? A guy goes out and kills these guys, and he's deemed a murderer. Yes, which he technically is. But do we really have to argue the the notion of whether that's what parent wouldn't ah, be yeah, in the yeah, same yeah. mindset? To be honest, if right. we had kids, like, even my godchildren, yeah, I'd want to fucking kill someone with a hammer. Wouldn't it wouldn't even be a question. I'd just be like, I'm going to kill you. Well, that's oh. why I sleep with a hammer next to my bed. You just, uh, made me, I just, I saw this meme on, I think, was it Facebook? This guy, it was in India, I believe. He was, he took the head of the rapist of his sister to the police station. Oh yeah, mm. you were telling me about yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I forgot to, the the person who posted straight out of a movie. Yeah, Yo, we need to stop talking about this in case someone goes out and does this shit, and then yeah, it's yeah, like, I listen to this podcast. This. We don't I don't this. fucking condone it either. No, but the it's been done, and the fact of the matter is, it's like there are less pedophiles here. Yeah, that is the nice one upside. Yeah, I think people like this. His name is a Jason <coughs> Vukovic. Uh, he <coughs> he puts fear in the pedophiles, and I think it's necessary. That's, what <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> so, that's <coughs> such a deep analysis. I love that. That's so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, because people like this, I mean, definitely it's going to put, bad thing is it's going to put pedophiles under the radar more. You know, they're mm-hmm. going to try to find different ways to get away with their crime, mm. you know. 
But I am, you know, what's funny too is talking about it. So kids feel like they can talk about it more. Right. They should, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, this, this guy who was attacking uh, the the pedophiles, he was actually abused himself too when he was young, you know? And dude, I mean, just imagine how many kids out there that experience this, but they don't have a voice. Yeah. You know? Do you remember that fucking documentary we were watching on HBO? Mm. Wasn't that the thing? Eron's the Golden State Killer. He like raped oh. and brutally murdered. Like he raped over fifty people, women, um, but murdered I think ten. Um, and they actually found him through like Ancestry dot com, which is crazy. Mm. Uh, but he had watched his sister get assaulted when she was oh like seven God. years old by like two guys on a military base where they lived. Um, and Germany, so in Germany, yeah. And so, and then he went on to like brutally attack women in like his adult life. And so, yeah, you wonder what that kind of trauma could do. Yeah, I think it should be at least like an absolute minimum life sentence. Hi, Indy, do you agree with me? Are we going to go to the pedophiles? Yeah, we are. Hi. Oh, I love you so fucking much. Are <laughs> 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 we going to talk about something more cheerful now? Like the fact that my dog loves me the best. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Indy. Yeah, I mean, I guess to end that topic, <laughs> fuck him. Yeah. yeah. You know? like, let him, let him die, dude. Let him rot. Yeah. Like, fucking... Anything uh, about pedophilia oh. or whatever that that shit, it's I can't tolerate at all, you know. Just death. Luckily, n- none of that ever happened to me, mm-hmm. or yeah. anyone close to me, at least f- from what I know. Yeah. But you'd be amazed. I'd be. Su- I would be surprised if someone doesn't listen to this and like say me too. Right. Yeah. Mm. It sucks. Yeah. It's uh, I don't shit. think anyone deserves to go through that. He was abused by his last owner. Ugh, makes me oh so yeah. upset. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you're a fucking cunt. But yeah. I love my dog so much. <laughs> he's the best now. Yeah, he's a good dog. He's a kid. Yo, he's such a good little protector. Yeah. Aren't you? I think, yeah, I think because also when dogs experience that kind of thing, they don't want to see it, right? Yeah. yeah. And so their instincts kick in, for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, fuck. Really? Dude. Blood <laughs> cheese. But yeah. Um. God, how lucky. Do- anyway, for the people listening, um, Indy is now sitting between us. I'm sure you could just hear me moaning and groaning as he right. clambered onto my lap. I don't know how much he weighs. Do you know About how much he weighs? Pounds, 55, 55 pounds. 55 pounds. Yeah. God, you little, He's a big you little boy. chunk. He's dense. Yeah. He's <laughs> wide. <laughs> He's girthy. <laughs> Yes, yeah, sir. Very girthy. I <laughs> <laughs> a beer can. Nice. Nah. Our Aussie Shepherd. <coughs> yeah. Well, baby. guys, that's a. Uh, that's an hour right there. Damn. Is that an hour? That yeah. was pretty fucking solid. We're getting good at this. Yeah. We're on some fucked up internal timer that this right. fucking horrible society has yeah. instilled in us. <laughs> By the way, I, I believe that ever since Newsom announced that or he passed that that's one of the major reasons why I want to get the fuck out of here yeah I don't blame you you know I think we should aim to leave within the next year I think by this time next year we should know where we're going right if not know which property that means we got a lot of traveling to do that's fine (laughs) let's do it let's go to uh, let's go to where oh my dad said i was gonna say we should definitely do nashville and i think um we should also my dad said to go and check out moab in utah Mm -hmm. yeah so let's go do that apparently it's like a super cute little community it's a great uh off-roading area too you guys are gonna have to come and check out the lanny and danny and the ldk project youtube channel to see some more off-roading videos with these guys okay should we call it yeah let's do it dope that was great guys Good shit. Later, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye.